very small world. We know that. We keep running into the same people. I absolutely love it. Earlier, well, late last year, actually, I went to the Bluegrass World of Wheels custom car show. It was absolutely amazing. Loved it. And that's where I met Greg, one of the um, organizers there. Greg, how's it going? Oh, it's going great today. How are you doing? Good. It's so good to see you here at the Rod Run. Thank and you. not only that, you have an amazing, beautiful Woody. It's absolutely stunning, sir. Let's start with the basics. What year is it? It's a 29 Ford Woody uh, pickup with a 32 grill shell. This is by far the best Woody that I have seen. And I'm going to say that, and I don't, do not want to upset anybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say the best Woody is because it's been done so well. Thank you very much. It's absolutely show car. You know, I have been checking out some Woodies, and you guys have been seeing them on the channel, and they've been amazing. We've seen some original and some tin Woodies. What do you have here? Well, it was a, it was a five-year build, and I had built two other Woodies that uh, Hercules Motor Car Company in Tampa, Florida had had built for me, and I told him one day, I said, I'd love to build a truck. And he said, well, I never built one. I said, well, I think you can. He said, well, I do too. <laughs> so so we started out, uh, we drew it out on a napkin. On a napkin? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and, and then, style. Yeah, well, you know, that's all we had. <laughs> and, then, and then he built the truck out of cardboard. He built it first out of cardboard. Yeah, you know, the, to get the proportion the way we wanted it to look. Yeah. And... Uh, of course, it's a, it's all a handmade cow. Okay. Cecil built a cow, and and then we we bought four fenders is what we actually bought. And Otherwise, then, it's just been built up. Yes, ma'am, it's up. all been built from the ground up. Wow. And Cecil got it all done uh, in in raw steel. Okay. And then I brought it home and uh, worked on it for a while. And then I went to Brad Starks in Paducah, and Brad actually uh, painted the truck. But I did all of the wood back at home myself. You did the wood grain yourself? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's, that's not yeah, easy. Yeah, oh, I, well, like I say, I had done a couple more. Yeah. And you learn as you go. Okay, well, Greg, you have done great. We're going to look at the truck in detail. Okay. But where does that come from for you? You've done a few cars, and, and you run a custom car show. Yes, ma'am, yeah. Well, you know, I've showed in the ISCA for about 10 years, and... Uh, then we lost our show in Louisville, and when Carl Casper, when he decided to retire, uh, we, we, Louisville needed a show. Yeah. I mean, it's a show town. People love the car shows. So we brought the show back, and uh, hopefully we're going to be able to continue. Uh, I hope so, too, because but, the show was amazing. Thank you. The crowd loved it. Oh, the you, crowd was great. You guys had some outstanding builds there. You yeah. know, it's run by you four couple. Yes, ma'am. Which is even better. It's very family orientated. Yeah. Now, before we look at the truck, while we're here on the topic of Bluegrass World of Wheels, what's the dates? It'd be the third week in January. The third week in January. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And it's in Louisville at the... Um, at Fair, Kentucky Fair and Expo Center. And it'll Center. be a Saturday and Sunday show. Saturday and Sunday. You guys, mm -hmm. you have to be there. I know I'm going to be there. <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you again. <laughs> I have to be there. It was, it was just amazing. And that actual, um, I really like the event, um, the location of it as well. Oh, it's a great venue. The Indoors, venue's perfect. Outdoors. Yeah. The NSRAs are there as well. The, well, yeah, they're there in the summer. Yep, they're, they're there in the summer. And so. it's a, it, like I say, it's just a, it's a class facility. Yes. And, uh, you know, we have the young builder thing, and that's going to be really good to get some of the younger people involved in the hobby. Oh, please tell us about that. Well, we, Ford, the UAW is helping to sponsor this thing with us, and we're going to get under 30 involved in building the cars and coming there and show it, and they can, they can win the young builder. That would be a really th good thing for a young guy. I mean... That is you know, that would be that would just be a lifetime dream for some of these young kids. 100%, and not only that, it's going to get the younger generation involved to keep the culture going. Yeah, we need to keep this hobby going, man. We need to keep it going, Greg. I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay, let's have a look here. First of all, the engine, sir. What have you got? Okay, it's a, it's a 49 to 53 Ford Flathead. And I had a lot of people run them Strongbird carburetors on there, but I didn't want to do that. So I had a, a intake put together to where we could run Rochester's because I think they're a better carburetor yep. and they stay they stay more in tune. Uh, 
that's going to give you points just on that engine. Well, yeah, 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 yes, ma'am, yeah. Full flathead is not easy. I mean, no, it's not no, in production anymore. No, so. no, and you have, and most of the people that know anything about them are dead. <laughs> <laughs> So you had your work cut out for you? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I had the, the, the fella in town, Miles Machine, they built a motor for me. And uh, we, we, had a, we had a few problems in the beginning, but once we figured out what was wrong, we, yep. we've been doing good since. Okay, well, it looks great. Thank you. I love that the paint has continued in. And it's not only the paint. Now, you've got your cables looking absolutely beautiful as well. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, the, the wiring on this truck is just amazing the way the guy uh, went through and did this wiring it's uh, they just done such a good job down there I have not um, seen um, the wiring and cables yeah I mean it's they done a nice job it we put a lot of thought a lot of effort into it like I say we worked on it five years beautiful uh, paint color what is it called it's it's called sunset bronze sunset bronze uh -huh. yeah and in, in the outside, it's got a little gold that comes out in it when the sunlight hits it. Nice. 29, Woody. Um, is that custom? Yeah, the sun visor. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all handmade. And then we put the we put wood in there to make it match the truck. <clears throat> Lovely. And the grill shell was made, <coughs> excuse me, by Aluminum Craft. And that's a that's a all that's a one-off grill that they made for that. This is very different. It is very custom. Yeah, yeah. It's one -off. It's, yeah. They've painted. Yeah, we paint road. we painted the center of it, and then it, we chromed the outside rim. That's what's giving that effect. It's beautiful. And it's got the the greening headlights on it that that are very hard to get anymore. Would have had in um, 29? Yeah, only these are a little bigger. Okay. And the way they go together, these these lenses actually screw off instead of having a clip up underneath of them. Okay. It, it cleans them up and makes them look, you know, more custom. Speaking of custom, I'm loving the pink stripes that you have done and the location of it as well. Well, thank you. Well done on that. That's, a, that's Brad Starks. He is a, he's a true artist. But it didn't need to be up on the hood. It didn't need to be on the sides yeah, or on yeah, the fender. Yeah, it had to be behind yeah, it needs to be hidden to where you can't see it. Exactly. And you that's know. what makes it and gives it that yeah. beautiful, subtle look. Thank you. And then he even he even put a line around the wheel just to uh, to carry the theme, you know, all together. But you have to look for the details in it uh, because he done such a good job hiding them and making them settle to where you can't hardly see them. And, and that's the thing with those subtle touches. When they're placed at the right spots, yes, ma'am. it really makes it stand out. Like looking at the wheel here, everybody, the rim is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love the chrome work on the rim and obviously the white border there as well. But when you add that strip onto it, it just gives it another element. And them are, and them are real knockoff wheels. Uh, you, have to, you have to take a lead hammer and hit that to take that wheel off. <laughs> a lead hammer? Yeah. Would, would that not damage the cup? It, the lead, it does not, does not damage the, the chrome. Okay. You know, you couldn't take a regular hammer, but you take a lead hammer. I didn't know that. Tell yeah, <laughs> and, that, and that hammer uh, has real dents in it from putting them on. Okay. Because, you, I mean, you have to hit it yes. hard. <laughs> and a lead hammer will not damage chrome? No, ma'am. I'm going to take your word on that. Well, I mean, it, it, it would damage stainless steel chrome, but that's steel that's been chrome. That's steel that you know? has been chrome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. Love it. Is this custom or would they have that up in 20 Well, minutes? it's somewhat custom. It, okay. it should have it should have not been exactly the way it is, but we okay. they modified it to where they wanted it Made to it be. Thicker? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay and tapered in the back to the point but otherwise the fenders have we done any work no the fenders are stock but the the hood sides uh would have been on a on a chevrolet because of the doors the ford always had the louvers but i i really like the doors so we changed the hood sides to what it I is like the doors too. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> 
we just start here right at the door here. You can open this Okay. Like. Okay. So this is the adjustment for the window. It screws out and then the window slides up and down in the track. Uh, and Cecil, we talked about doing this wicker in here. That's that's real wicker caning would have been in a chair bottom of an old chair. And, and what gave you that idea to do that? Well, I wanted to build a, a, a little package tray. I wanted to build a package tray in there. Uh, just, you know, you could put your sunglasses or something in there because you don't have a glove box. Uh, and then we decided we was going to put that in there, and then we just said we'd carry it on into the to the doors. And then we went on up here, and Cecil made these pieces here. Uh, that's all handmade. He made yes. them, and then we put the wicker caning in behind it. Wow. And it's a, a 32 Plymouth gauge cluster that I had... Uh, classic instruments redo and we put palm trees and stuff like that on the inside of it and then I had the, the gas pedal and the brake pedal are custom made as surfboards they are surfboards <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that before yeah and I love the suede on the sea and look at the back look at the back rest of the well the, the theme on the on the seat was to make it look like a, a lawn chair you know, an old lawn chair that you would have. And Tracy Weaver uh, come up with that theme. Uh, and Tracy did the interior and, and he done a wonderful job on the interior. Uh, just very nice. And the headliner, to me the headliner is the best part of the interior because it looks like a hardwood floor. Does. In someone's deck, home. It looks like a deck. Yeah. So when you're yeah, a big dance floor. A big dance floor, exactly. Yeah. You're sitting in it, and it just makes you feel like you're inside a wood. Gives you that you're nice. You're driving feeling. a late '60s white Chevrolet Impala, antique license tag seven four nine nine five marked at the loading dock. Please remain seated until the next vehicle comes to a halt. Please remain seated until the next vehicle comes to a halt. Please remain seated until the next vehicle comes to a halt. Please remain seated until the next vehicle comes to a halt. Please remain seated until the next vehicle comes to a halt. Please remain seated until the next vehicle comes to a halt. Please remain seated until the next vehicle comes to a halt. Please remain seated until the next vehicle comes to a halt. Please remain seated until the it has been done so well. And uh, so this is all. It's all. Made. It's all wood. It's all real wood. It's all maple. It's all maple. Yes, ma'am, except for the bed. Okay, and, so that's what I, I think I want to know is yeah. what have you painted and what is uh, well, real wood? Well, the real wood, is, uh, the whole cab, and the bed is all real wood. It's all real wood. Yes, ma'am, okay. real hardwood maple, and okay. uh, Cecil done all of that, and then. And then when we took it apart, I took it home and we finished it in Kentucky. Uh, Mike Sullivan, he was a painter. He's a painter in Louisville. He helped me clear it. And we got five gallons of clear on the wood. And it's all, it's slick. <laughs> and then we had, all these are all custom. Uh, these, these bed rail pieces, them are, them are all one off. Uh, they actually sand casted a mold to make them and and we we then after they was made we had them chromed of course wow. i love the back here oh yeah the that. the rear fenders uh really turned out very nice in the back uh, wow. and then on the running boards the running boards are that's that's all custom of course, they were they was made custom and linked first because we linked in the cab four inches of the, the over a stock okay. truck. So then after we did that, then we made then we Brad made this pad, and then we put the rubber on top of. We made it out of aluminum, and they see and see that out, and then we put the pad on it. Uh, One of the things that I love about cars when they're done to this level is that. Every single small detail is important. Oh, it's unbelievable. Every single thing, no matter how small it is, whether it's hidden or not. Yeah, the, yeah if it's hidden, the, you still, you, somebody knows it's there. Somebody knows it's you there. You know, even, pro probably you would never notice this, but underneath here, you can see where we put a strip. Oh, yes, of, I can. That's, that. that's a matte finish paint underneath of that, and then Brad pinstriped that. 
Well, so as someone who runs a high-end car show, you wouldn't know what the judges <laughs> would be looking for well, and where they would be looking for. Well, yeah, but everything's <laughs> got flaws. <laughs> We're not going to talk about the flaws well, yeah. this looks way yeah, too but, good for that. And then this, this, this emblem back here, that says driftwood. Yeah. Now, what that is, that's the exact size and shape that would have been on a 62 Ford custom cab, but it would have said custom cab. And we had that on there, and Brad got to thinking, he said, man, we need to change that to driftwood. So he hired a guy to make that out of, out of aluminum, and then, it looks so good. yeah, it's, it turned out really nice. And the scroll above the rear window, I, I really like that. You know, that instead of just had a straight piece yes. of it, you know, he put that little scroll in there, and that just makes it, it puts it all together, it I really guess. Does. You know. It really does. And if that had just been straight, it wouldn't have drawn your eye to it. No, 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 no. Yeah. It would, you would have just overlooked it. But been as it's like that, it, it really uh, changes the difference. And then the bed wood is mahogany, and we wanted these rails to match, uh, just to give it a different contrast, you know, in color. And then, oh, and then, the big and then we, we got to have the surfboard. We got you know. to have the surfboard, but before we talk about the surfboard, we need to talk about the stand that it is sitting on. Okay. Look at this. Yeah. That weave is continued on here. Yes, yeah. And then the shape is even a surfboard right here in that. It's just, like I say, you know, we spent so much time and, and thought went into this process that people just wouldn't really believe. Wow. Uh, but like I say, it was, it was a lifelong dream of mine to be able to do this. And I wish my wife was here. So it, it was, you know, to, for her to, to step back and watch me do this. <laughs> I mean, you know, because you know we're we, you know we work hard. Yes. And uh, this don't get done overnight. You no. know, it takes a long time and a lot of money, of course. Of course, and, and that's and that's the thing that I like to talk to you guys and give you this platform. Yeah. Not only is this so much fun for me, and I am learning so much stuff along the way, and as well as seeing these beautiful cars, but also because it needs to be recognized, and this is what I keep emphasizing. The amount of work and effort, and, effort. and, and it and it has to be a fan and it's a family thing too, yeah. you know, because you know if you if you did, you know if you was in this world by yourself, it wouldn't be no good. No, it wouldn't be you no know, fun. You know, but uh, you know, it's just a family-oriented deal. What I want to know is about your dream. Well, why the Woody? <laughs> well, <laughs> I I, just, I love the beach. Okay. Uh, and and ever since I was a kid, I I love the beach. And when we, and all of these show cars need to have a name. So when we started the name in this one, we we thought about a lot of different names. And when me and my wife got married, we stayed at the Driftwood Beach Hotel in Daytona, and that's how the name come about. Nice. And, and you've uh, always wanted to do a Woody. I've always want. I wanted. I wanted to build a car to go to Detroit. Okay. You know, I've had some some show cars, but but not to this level. But I always dreamed of going to Detroit. Well, you know, there's a slight problem with that now that we have seen it. You can't take these to Detroit. No, anymore. I went to Detroit, though. Okay. But I did go in, 20, in 2020. In 2020? Yes, ma'am, okay. right before COVID started. And how did Driftwood go in that? I, well, I got a grade 8. Grade 8. Yes, nice. ma'am. Nice. And, uh, you know, of course, they don't tell you where you finish, but they just pick yes. one. But I did get a grade 8. I wonder and, what it was in 2020, the Riddler. Oh, it was the, uh, I think it's a 65 wagon. It was a wagon. Uh, okay. The black wagon. Uh, okay. I think I saw that on the flies because yeah, 2021. Yeah, yeah, 2021 it was on the picture. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm terrible. I can't remember their names. Such a nice guy, though. But yeah. their, their car is very, very nice. They paid... A lot of attention oh, to there, detail. There is a lot of attention. A lot, a lot of attention to detail. <laughs> um, so, as also a one of the grade eight participants for the Riddler, I'm going to ask you because we did cover the Detroit um, Autorama, and I interviewed some of the people there. And of course, you can't show the car. No, no, no. It all has to be secret. So for five years. For five years. You had driftwood hidden. Yes, ma'am. People. How is that like? Well, it's kind of strange. 
you know, even the people in my hometown, you know, in Louisville, they didn't even know I was doing this. And so when we went up there, uh, you know, and of course with social media and Facebook, yes. you know, once uh, once you take that thing out of the trailer, yes. it's unveiled. Yeah. And so they was burning it up. <laughs> but I mean, you know, like I say, though, it's all good. It was it was it was one of the best times of my life. How's that? Nice. But even coming to these things, I really enjoy it. You know, you build these things to do this. Yes. And since I'm part of owners in the Bluegrass World of Wheels, I can no longer show in That's the ISC. It. Well, no, not even my own show, but in the whole association. I can't show in ISCA shows. Well, I could show, but I can't compete. How's that? So, you know, if you can't compete, you might as well not go. You, you know, so, much time so so that's why I I want you know I, I I was you know appreciated them wanting me to come down here. Yeah. You know what I mean. Well, I'm so glad you did come. I'm happy well. I ran into you again. I do want to look at the undercarriage. Tell okay. Us about that. Okay. I'm glad you've got mirrors. Yes, ma'am. Well, we built. They built. Uh, Cecil built roll pads to cover all of that up, uh, to where you can't. You know, you can't see the bottom of the vehicle. And then and then Brad, when we did the oil pan, he made the oil pan and the, the transmission cover and and the uh, the flywheel cover with them with them lines in it where they're all lined up. You can stand in the front of it and look down through there and see all of that's in a straight line. And then all of the radius rods for the front, the back and all them. Uh, them are all matched with the holes in them as as well as the big brakes they've all got all of that I'm gonna call it that raised line in them yeah. to where they all go together uh, and of course the exhaust you know, is all chrome how do you clean this how do you keep it clean <laughs> I've well, seen those tiny bits <laughs> well you, you can't you know you just you just have to keep wiping on it. You just have to keep wiping. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And I mean, at home you'd have to keep this waste. Well, just I so keep you it. Could go under I, yeah, it I keep it covered up. You, you know. Keep it full covered up. Yeah. But even keeping it covered up, what's the trick to it? Because dust still will. Oh, don't, well, uh, it's it's gonna, it's in a bubble. It's in a bubble. <laughs> that's what I wanted to hear. Well, I hate to say that, but that's where it lives. It lives <laughs> in a bubble. It either lives in a bubble or in the box. <laughs> oh. Tell me about the steering wheel, sir. Well, th that, was, that was Brad's design of the steering wheel. And then he put the DW in the middle of it to be the driftwood. When it's your car, you got to make it your own. Yeah, and then, and then even even back to the seat. The seat frame is all handmade. The a pedestal. Look at the pin striping. You know, it's just, the, it's just the little stuff that you don't see. Uh, The, then the seal plates with the with the driftwood in them. Uh, Tracy done such a nice job on them. Uh, I'll show you. Here, here's one of the coolest things. This right here is what he did with the key. That's the key. That's the key. Get out of here. Let me let me hold on to this. <laughs> I'll be sure to lose this. <laughs> yeah, he made. It's not a big yeah. bunch. I lose it. This is. You know, he made it look like a knob. That's so neat. Oh yeah, it was just the. Uh, wow. Like I say, the the little things is what uh, what puts it all together. Wow. Okay, well, Greg, this is just absolutely beautiful, and I know the judges were here earlier as well. They looked very keen, they looked very happy, and they were looking at every inch of this. And the, the, the rear end is a winner's quick change. <clears throat> well, if you wanted to change the, the gears in the rear end, uh, you would just take off that, that outside plate and you could get right in there and change the uh, the gear ratio in it. Okay. And and then we've got the pinstriping Look on the, the rear. pinstriping, everyone, wow. And I don't know if you see the Ford emblem yeah, embossed know. underneath the roll pan. 
Uh, like I say, the detail that was put into this was, it's just amazing to me. And then the tailgate, we even CNC driftwood in the tailgate. Uh, that is not added to this. This is machined out of a big, thick piece of wood in order to oh, get this. Yeah, to get the whole deal was ma it was machined in order to get these offsets in here and to get that put in there. Uh, we had to make the tailgate about a couple of times because it kept warping because we took so much wood out of the out of the thick piece of wood it was drying at different stages uh, but Cecil so what would you have to do what would be something if you know how to um, keep it from drying well once once it once it dries and when you start to clear this wood the first thing you have to do is seal up the edges first so it don't pick up no more moisture pick up because it picks up the edges they yeah the cut as cut edges is where it picks up the moisture okay. so when you get this thing to where you want it you you seal the edges first and then uh it won't pick up the moisture and then we'll probably we probably got five coats of clear on this before it starts building up because oh, it coats. soaks in yeah. and then once it starts building up then we go in and sand it flat and and do it again do it again. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then Brad, even on the surfboard, I don't know.